Station. This is Houston on Space to Ground 2. Are you ready for the event? United States Patent and Trademark Office. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station. This is Vaishali Odapa with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. How do you hear me? Station, your mic is off. It is great to meet you. I have you loud and clear. Hello, Jeanette. Thank you so much for uh, speaking with us today. So excited to speak with you. We know you've been aboard the ISS for six months. Can you tell us about the mission and the scientific experiments the crew will be conducting? Well, I'm here as a, a part of Crew 8. We are Crew 8 because we flew on Dragon, um, and we're a part of Expedition 71. And our mission this time was to conduct the research that came up on SpaceX 30. We also have several spacewalks that we're conducting, but we also take care of the International Space Station. So if something breaks, we also we have to fix that as well. So our mission is over the next six months, take care of the entire space station. That's fascinating, thanks so much. So what are your duties as a flight engineer? So some of my duties involve, you know, one of the things we have to do daily is we have to exercise. And we do that to take care of our bones and our muscles. So we exercise every day, that's part of my um, responsibility. And then we have a timeline of activities that, are, that we have to conduct. And like today, some of the activities that we have are to like reclaim uh, water from our uh, urine processor and we're gonna recycle that water and make it into that um, liquid and make it into water. So today we're changing out tanks and then we're uh, emptying certain tanks so that we can create water. I, oh my gosh, that is so fans, fascinating. Um, so before your journey to space, we know you spent 10 days underwater at the Aquarius Reef Base in Florida. For both space and at the reef base, you had to put your faith in tools and equipment that keep you safe. Could you tell us how your experience as an inventor influenced your confidence in the equipment? Well, one of the things um, that being a researcher taught me was you know, if you understand the concepts of what you're doing when you have the instructions, because we become more operators as we become astronauts. So the technical background actually gives us a depth of, depth of understanding of what we're doing. And then we can be the operator, the hands and the eyes of researchers on the earth to conduct the research. And I do think that having a, a foundation in research and testing gives you a better um, perspective on understanding what it is that you're conducting so that the, perform the um, experiment itself can be performed better and we get better research out of that. I love that. And so your experience as an innovator, that, has it come handy on the International Space Station? Well, it definitely comes in handy having a depth of understanding of what's, um, what the impacts could be for some of the research. Some of the research we were doing is state-of-the-art first-time research. For example, we were working on uh, nanotherapeutics. And so that's another thing that's totally new, first time things were done here on the space station. And uh, just this week, we were also working on immunity assay. And so actually that was last week, we were working on an immunity assay project where for the first time we can monitor um, a person from the entire six months, pre-flight, during flight and post-flight and monitor their cellular immune um, function. So, and that's through the development of these new um, assay tubes. 
So there's a lot of things that we're doing and having that background and that depth of research gives you a better understanding of how to help and, and, and make sure that the researchers on the ground get the data that they need to conduct the experiment. And so what are your thoughts on the importance of space exploration for humanity? And how can inventors make a difference in this area? Well, right now with the, um, the, the mission to go back to the moon and then maybe on to Mars from there, there's a lot of new technology that's needed and required to do that. So we're going back to the moon for the first time in decades. And a lot of the research that we'll do there will help us get to Mars. And we need new innovative technologies for propulsion systems, materials, even countermeasures for the human body to get us to last longer outside of the Earth's protection. So with all of these new technologies, innovators are definitely needed. And, you know, a couple of years ago in talking with um, some of the folks at, out at NASDAQ, you know, they predicted that with just going back to the moon, they'll likely, that will alone will generate about a trillion dollars of revenue. And this all involves new uh, inventors coming up with new ways to do things off the planet. I love it. From the moon to Mars to beyond. So that is so fantastic. Now, I know you're a patent holder with a patent related to vehicle safety. Did you ever envision yourself as an innovator, inventor? And it's funny, I never did think of myself as an innovator, an inventor, but Ford Motor Company actually offered up the idea in that um, coming from a background in smart materials, they wanted to develop new um, technologies based on this, like different actuators that could help reduce the vibrations that come into the vehicle and the, and the driver can fill or the passenger can fill. And they wanted to use these smart materials. But they were the first ones to think, we need to make sure that we patent these ideas because they're gonna be new and innovative. And that's where the idea came from. Even though my sister works at the Patent and Trademark Office, it never dawned on me that I would have the opportunity to do that. But Ford Motor Company, with the foresight to see that some of the things we would do would be um, unique and innovative, um, had that in mind. And part of the inventing process is experimenting with different methods and ideas, and also learning from failure. Can you tell us a little bit about a failure you learned from while you were inventing? Oh, there's always, um, uh, there's so much more to learn from a failure than a success. And, you know, one of the things that we were working on was trying to figure out which actuator to use to reduce vibrations um, as large as we didn't know actually how large the vibrations we would need um, to reduce. And so one of the things that we failed to do was to measure that initially. And so, and then not just measure it there, but also to come up with a plan to test various um, actuators, um, different types from piezoelectric to magnetostrictive. And we should have tested various um, den energy densities of each one of these. We only used two. And our, our first experiment, um, it didn't quite fail, but it didn't meet the standard. So we had to do many, many more. And so just those types of um, things, um, I, whenever I have a new idea now, I try to map it out and get a, as much detail and figure out a plan before we go in, but a plan so that we'll get as much data as we can. And so collecting a lot of data is the best way to go because if you only test one little aspect of it, you really don't have enough data to make an assessment. And so having the right data is always important and collecting more than you think you need. Yeah, I do agree that data is so important. And also another motto for me is that, uh, you know, failure should be your fuel. So I love how that was also something that drove you. Now I'm gonna um, be going to my last question. And after that, we're gonna have a question from a very special examiner. But my last question is, there are little girls across the globe that know that they can be inventors and even astronauts because you have paved a path for them. 
what does it mean to know that girls and young women and also old women like me look up to you? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite frankly flattered. Um, you know, the thing that I, I, knowing that, it just gives me a sense of responsibility and a sense of responsibility to, um, you know, continue to do things that will expand the horizons of young girls and to just to know that, you know, if I'm doing these things, there's no reason they can't do these things as well. Um, I was a little girl trying to figure out my way from point A to B and consistently working and going forward and regardless of what the barriers were. And it, it just gives me a, a great deal of responsibility to give back because when I was that kid doing those things, I had many people who were helping me. So I want to be a person that can help these young ladies and young women get from point A to B and let them know that, hey, if I'm here doing these things, there's absolutely no reason they can't do them. Hi, Jill. <laughs> Everyone was referring to you as Jeanette, but um, I know you as Jill, so I'm going to refer to you that way. So I have a question for you. I know that in our high school yearbook, there was a section where we wrote down our future aspirations. What was yours? Did you fulfill the dream that you, your high school, um, your high school self wrote down years ago? Uh, howdy to my twin sister. I didn't realize that you would be here today. Um, anyhow. Um, my aspirations were simple getting out of high school because I never dreamed I'd be here. Mine was just to become an engineer, own a Jaguar, and, you know, be a successful engineer. And that was the bottom line, and even work at NASA. So I think I've achieved those dreams, but I do think that I was afraid to dream too big at that time. <laughs> yeah. And so, okay, wait, well, wait, Janet has wait, to wait, answer the Janet question now, to too. <laughs> I have to answer the question. Well, I remember um, writing down that I wanted to be a scientist and I wanted to be a mom. And so I achieved both of those. So I'm very happy with that. So, okay, so um, I just want to thank you for just taking the time to talk with us. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm proud of you. I know our entire family, we're so proud of your achievements. And I just want to thank you, um, as I said, for spending the time and answering a few questions for us. Um, we're so proud of you and your crewmates. Our prayers are with you for, for a continued successful mission. And we look forward <laughs> to you guys coming back home and um, having a safe journey back home to, here um, to us on Earth. Just thank you so much, and I will talk to you later on today. Have a good one. Sorry, I was a little nervous, but <laughs> have a great day. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks, Bertie. <laughs>